Morning. It's Tuesday, August 18th. Congress will be returning to vote by Saturday to help out the Postal Service. I've talked about this for a couple days. It was hot news. It's cooling off. Now, here's the hottest news. The highest temperature in over 100 years was recorded in Death Valley. It reached 130 degrees. Now, there were some other days where it reached more, but those days were questionable. So this is officially the hottest day on record in Death Valley. The Democratic Convention started last night. It was a two-hour show. It's going to be on two hours for the next three nights also. Last night... Governor Cuomo spoke, Michelle Obama spoke, and they had several other speakers. So I'm not going to get into what those people said, and that's about it on that. That's all I want to say about that right now. The coronavirus has continued its rampage, and uh, two high-ranking officials in the CDC left their posts. The chief of staff and the deputy chief of staff left. Uh, they contend they had have personal things to take care of, and they're going to go into business themselves starting a consulting firm. Meanwhile, uh, clusters of the disease are cropping up all over. Several college campuses, including the University of North Carolina and the University of Oklahoma, have cases. The Oklahoma football team had nine players testing positive. But that doesn't matter to them. They're moving ahead to play the fall season. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with the schools. Seems like every time they open a set of schools, there's a disaster working. There's many schools around the country that have been quarantined. So, I guess it's up to the parents to decide what to do. And I hope they decide correctly because it doesn't look like we have this disease under control yet. Talking about things under control, it's clear that gun violence in New York City is not under control. Over the weekend, there were 40 more shootings. These shootings happened even though the New York City Police Department has stepped up high visibility patrols, making gun arrests and breaking up large gatherings that have occurred in areas of Brooklyn, Manhattan, and the Bronx, where this gun violence had occurred on the previous nights. And New York is not alone. There's been a 37% increase in violence in 20 major U.S. cities from May to June in 2020. Researchers at the College of Criminal Justice, who have examined and are closely watching the spikes in homicides and aggravated assault, say it's too soon to draw conclusions about one contributing factor, like the fact that the police have come under fire and that only 48% of the people have a uh, positive view of the police. They make note of the fact that the social stress caused by COVID-19 and the recent national unrest cannot be overlooked as a cause of violence. And many police experts tend to agree with this. And one of the experts said, this is unlike any other time in American history. We have the coronavirus going on and all of the recent calls for police reform have an impact on law enforcement. It's clear when you think about it. We have social unrest in the country. And so the police departments are spread thin. Managing to control the social unrest, the looting and the rioting. And then you got people who are wearing masks all over the place. So it doesn't seem unusual to me and there are many in society who would like to take advantage of the situation. Now, I don't say that they're all going out there looking to shoot somebody. But if you have a gun and you're out there and you're trying to do something, you probably will shoot somebody at some point in time. 
So it's a huge combination that has hit this society. The pandemic, the protesting, the looting. When have we seen such social unrest? And then throw on top of that the political upheaval with the upcoming election. This is a really, really, really unstable time in our society. And for some reason, there are many who are taking advantage of the instability. I don't know if they planned it, you know, if, if they necessarily planned it, but if they're wandering around looking for trouble, they'll find it. So I look at the big picture in my head right now, and I see a pandemic which has people on edge and cooped up and probably bursting with energy. I have diminished public confidence in police. I have an increased rate of violent crime and public unrest that's going on all at the same time. And public safety that is suffering because police officers are reluctant to do the job at 100% because they may appear on some video somewhere and be attacked for what might be considered over-aggressiveness, for lack of a better term. So look at that entire combination of events. And then think about the bad guy. Because the bad guys will see an opportunity and will take advantage of it. Which means there will be an increase in robberies and rapes and shootings. And we're seeing it. And on top of all that is public confusion, we have the political unrest. And we have the racism that exists in this country. So this is a bad time in America. And I don't have an answer. And I'm not sure that everybody's looking at the same picture. So I only hope that we can get at least one of these things under control in the next couple of months. And I leave you with those thoughts right now. Have a great day. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Thank <laughs> you.